I got interested in Barry Keefe when I was about 16. Um, I went to see a play he'd written called Bastard Angel that the RSC were doing in 1980, I think it was. And I, I, I bought a copy of the script and he had such a particular way of writing. He, he used incredibly short sentences. I mean, they weren't even sentences. I mean, it's slightly like David Mamet writes where it's just really um, short, pithy, sound bites even. It really struck me that it was really true to how people speak because as I am clearly demonstrating now we speak in non sequiturs all the time, you know, we don't complete sentences. And it was uh, really refreshing to see a play that was written in what felt like incredibly real um, dialogue. And I adapted his ha habit of using full stops far too often. And if I was very heavily influenced by Coronation Street as well. I wanted to try Coronation Street from the age of about 13. The only thing I can think of is that I just write down everything I can think of. I, c I can write pages and pages and pages about detail. It's the detail uh, that um, I want to know everything about them. Um, so I will write endless pages about a character or a story, stories particularly, um, before I actually start writing the script. And I, and I find the more you do um, at that stage, the more the script kind of writes itself when you actually get to the point of sitting down. From being about seven, I used to do cartoon strips. And so I'd, I've always had this compulsion to want to tell stories. And the first dialogue I started writing, I think when I was about 11, and I'd never seen a play written down, so I had nothing to, um, I didn't have a guide as to what to do, but I've, I did write dialogue before I knew that that's what people did. As a child, I didn't read books. I, I never read novels. I think I was, looking back, at, at the time I didn't think this, but looking back, I think I was dyslexic. And I never read novels because I thought, I, I guess I thought they were boring. And the, the only thing that interested me was what people said. So if there were any descriptions about the hills and what people looked like, I wasn't interested. I was only interested in what they said. So I think that's why I write dialogue. I've just finished uh, writing um, this six part series for BBC One called Last Tango in Halifax. I, I can tell you what the line is. I can't pretend to act it though. Um, it's, about, it's this character who's um, had a parking space stolen by this other character. And uh, she refers to her, she says to her mother, um, we're gonna have to go mum because some brain dead low life trailer trash just nicked my parking space. When I was about to write the first episode of At Home with the Braithwaite, uh, Tony Wood, who'd commissioned the script in the first place, said to me, don't write the first episode, write the third episode. And that was incredibly brilliant advice because it, it, it meant that will be the first episode, what you think of as, what, as the third episode will be the first episode. And the brilliant thing about that is that you completely hit the ground running. You, 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 your stories have already started. There's no uh, preamble. It's, you get straight in there with your stories. So that has always stayed with me. And the other second thing, um, Paul Abbott told me this. Um, it was when I wrote um, an episode, well, I wrote a good few episodes of um, Children's Ward. And... Um, after I'd written the first one, um, I remember Paul ringing me up and saying something that I hadn't realised, but, it, but it, uh, being made conscious of it um, is something else that I always think of now. He said it's clear from the way you've written, you haven't written every piece of dialogue you've written, it's clear that you haven't written the first thing you've thought of, or the second thing you've thought of, or the third thing you've thought of, you've written the seventh thing you've thought of. Which I, I was really... Having um, put that into words, was I realised that it was true, that I um, think really long and hard about how people speak, exactly what they're going to say. And it's a form of self-editing, which not everybody does, and it amazes me that not everybody does, but I think it's essential. Mm -hmm.